We are the ultimate voyeurs, the ultimate peeping toms. I'm watching this person and this person has no clue what's going on. No one's gonna catch us and we're getting orders to take these people's lives. You never know who you're killing because you never actually see a face. You just have silhouettes. They don't have to take the shot. They don't have to bear that burden. I'm the one that has to bear that burden. There's always been a connection between the world of war and the world of entertainment. The military has invested in creating video games that they're using as recruiting tools. War is an unbelievably profitable business. The drones have been terrifically effective. They've taken out a lot of the Al-Qaeda leadership. It's cheap. It doesn't involve putting troops on the ground. I believe the United States of America must remain a standard bearer in the conduct of war. That is what makes us different from those whom we fight. The United States is violating one of the most fundamental rights of all, the right to life. There's a large number of innocent civilians who are being killed, and that has to be reported. The majority of the secret drone strikes that have taken place have, we have always understood, been carried out by the Central Intelligence Agency. There is a lie hidden within that truth. That's the trailer for the new documentary, Drone. It premiered this week on national television in Germany and France. Its director, Tanya hessen shea joins us now from Norway via Democracy Now! video stream. And in London, we're joined by Chris Woods, one of the people in the film, an award-winning reporter who investigates drone warfare. He recently wrote an article for The Guardian called CIA's Pakistan Drone Strikes Carried Out by Regular U.S. Air Force Personnel. He's featured in the new film, Drone, working on a forthcoming book called Sudden Justice, America's Secret Drone Wars. Welcome both to Democracy Now! Chris, let's start with you. The significance of the Air Force um, being involved with the drone strikes in Pakistan. The Air Force, U.S. Air Force, has a long history of working with the Central Intelligence Agency. You can go back to the 1950s, the 1960s. U.S. Air Force pilots, for example, flew U-2 uh, CIA flights over Russia. What's different here, of course, is that the CIA now carries out targeted killings and has been doing for more than a decade. And what we found uh, and what Tonya's uh, film shows is that a, a conventional U.S. Air Force squadron, regular uh, men and women in the Air Force, have actually been carrying out these targeted killings for the CIA for a decade now. And I think that's uh, going to surprise quite a lot of people. And the implications of that in terms of uh, the chain of command, in terms of the responsibility of, uh, of the military versus the CIA? Well, they're, as I say, they're regular Air Force personnel, but they're taking their orders from a civilian intelligence agency, orders to kill. And uh, as my work and that of others have shown in Pakistan, for example, where many of these targeted killings have taken place, more than two and a half thousand people, I think, have been killed in Pakistan by these drone strikes, among them perhaps 400 civilians. There have been some really problematic kinds of uh, bombing. So, for example, the deliberate targeting of rescuers and of funerals, uh, which are still under investigation as possible war crimes uh, by uh, UN investigation teams. So, where does this leave conventional air force answering to a civilian intelligence agency? Where's the chain of command here? We don't actually know. Uh, and unfortunately, the CIA, the National Security Council and the Pentagon all decided that they weren't going to talk on this occasion uh, and they won't talk about this to us. Let's go to another clip from the new film, Drone, about how the CIA's Pakistan drone strikes are carried out by regular U.S. Air Force personnel. We hear from two former drone operators, uh, former Air Force pilots Brandon Bryant and Michael Haas. The clip begins with our guest Chris Woods, followed by Ben Emerson, the U.S. Special Rapporteur on Counterterrorism and Human Rights. The majority of the secret drone strikes that have taken place have, we have always understood, been carried out by the Central Intelligence Agency, that most secretive of U.S. intelligence uh, organs, protected by huge layers uh, of laws. 
uh, anything the CIA is involved in, we're really not supposed to know about. The crucial obstacle to transparency was the decision to hand a targeted killing by drone program into the hands of an intelligence agency, where accountability is impossible. Um, but the United States is engaged in a, a, an active program to migrate its drone technology away from the CIA and into the hands of DOD. There is a lie hidden within that truth. And the lie is that it's always been the Air Force that has flown those missions. <laughs> CIA might be the customer, but the Air Force has always flown it. The 17th squadron that flies, they're the super top secret squirrel. Can't tell you what I'm doing, but I can tell you that it's super secret. Squadron 17 is Area 51 isolated on a single base. I think it's pretty widely known that the CIA controls their mission. I know right before I left Creech, they actually were putting uh, privacy fences up so you couldn't even see the front doors or the parking lot. And it got to the point you can't even see, you don't even know who's in there anymore. People brag, people talk about how they were so secret and that they were kicking so much ass, killing terrorists. And the CIA label is just an excuse to not have to give up any information. That's all it's ever been. Nothing's gonna change, at least nothing that we can see. That's Brandon uh, Bryant and Michael Haas, both uh, drone operators, a clip from the new film Drone. Uh, as we turn now to the filmmaker who made this film, Tanya Hessenshe, speaking to us from Oslo, Norway, uh, the significance of what you have found, uh, Michael Haas speaking to you for the first time, is that right, Tanya? Yes, uh, that is correct. Um, Michael uh, was getting very frustrated uh, with the amount of secrecy that uh, clouds uh, the CIA war. And uh, he decided that it's important that uh, the American people know uh, what is going on. And he also felt it was very wrong that uh, Brandon Bryant, the other drone operator that we have in the film, uh, had been the only one speaking out for all this time. So. Um, both their stories, I think, are, are very important for us to know what is happening from the inside of the drone program. And Tonya Hessen Shea, the, uh, the relationship uh, between the CIA and the Pentagon and video gamers and their, uh, uh, their uh, desire to recruit gamers, could you talk about that? Yeah, uh, in the film, uh, we look at how militaries now across the world uh, are targeting gamers uh, in their recruiting strategies. Um, the U.S. military has been doing this for a long time with games like America's Army. And in the film, uh, we visit several Scandinavian um, gaming conferences uh, where the military is very actively recruit uh, gamers as our new warriors uh, for the modern warfare, not just drone war, but also uh, cyber warfare. And um, I think the, the line between uh, the virtual and real war is, is very interesting and something that we need to take seriously. And what does that do as well, not only to uh, between virtual and real war, but to the moral responsibility uh, of uh, people who are recruited to do these kinds of attacks? Well, I think that's a very interesting question. Uh, I actually got the idea for this film uh, when I heard a story of a gamer who dropped out of college uh, or high school and joined the army, and he was quickly recruited as a drone pilot. And at the age of, uh, of 19, he became an instructor for other drone pilots. And uh, to me, this was very concerning, and that's how I started looking into this. And um, I don't believe that the drone pilots uh, think that they're actually playing a video game, but I think that the, the similarities are very, very obvious and something uh, we need to look at. And also... Uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, it's just, you know, as far as the interface and the joystick, I know there's been a very close uh, relationship between the world of entertainment and the world of uh, or the militaries. So. 
Antonia, you're showing this in Europe. Uh, you've shown it in Germany and France. What is the reaction to the U.S. drone strikes? Uh, we've had very uh, good reactions from our premiere. Uh, we're just releasing this film uh, right now. Uh, but I do think that uh, here in Europe, there is a great concern about the U.S. precedent of the drones used in targeted killing. Uh, so uh, it will be very interesting to see, uh, also because here um, EU and NATO are now really pushing to acquire armed drones. Uh, so I think it's very important that we're coming out with this film right now. And Chris Woods, uh, there is this film that's being shown on American television now, a video, uh, supposedly, that shows al-Qaeda in Yemen um, threatening attacks on the U.S. It features footage of what appears to be a large al-Qaeda gathering in Yemen, with hundreds welcoming the release of prisoners freed in a jailbreak. Uh, there was some commentary yesterday on U.S. television. Is this as a result of is this growing in Yemen because of the pressure not to have drone strikes in Yemen? Your response, Chris Woods, and you know about this video. Mm. Well, uh, the, the drone strikes are temporarily stopped in Pakistan, but they certainly haven't stopped in Yemen. They're still going on. As far as we understand, JSOC strikes are presently banned there, but CIA strikes continue. So this was very daring, I would say, of, of al Qaeda to be so public and so in the open. Uh, holding uh, this gathering. And in fact, the number two of al-Qaeda in, in Yemen was present. He's very, very rarely seen in public. So this was a public taunting, if you like, of both the Yemen government and of the United States. The very act of appearing outside in large numbers is, is if you like, uh, you, you know, thumbing your nose uh, at this ability uh, of the United States to strike anywhere with drones. But it is worrying, and al-Qaeda certainly hasn't been broken. It's, it's carried out a number of, of, of appalling attacks, both on civilians and on the military in Yemen in recent weeks. So it's, it's still there. It's still a problem. Uh, and the drone strikes against them are continuing. <laughs>